Hi, hello, it's Ray. The pathways or study requirements to becoming a general psychologist or clinical psychologist in Australia have changed. And today I'm gonna to detail all of the pathways that you can take. I actually filmed this video before I spent the last hour filming it and then I was watching back the footage and I got so confused <laughs> with what I was saying that I'm just gonna redo it right now. So there is a diagram and I want you right now open up the description bar and pull up this diagram, which I'm gonna put onto the screen because it details all of the pathways that I'm gonna talk you through. The biggest change is that they've dropped the pathway that you see on the far right called the four plus two, which is where you do an undergraduate psychology degree and then you do two years of a work experience that you arrange yourself. And I think the issue was that with the four plus two, the two years is very different based on who you get placed with or who you find. Some of them are outstanding supervisors. They make you an amazing psychologist. It's great training. And then some of them are probably a bit dodgy. And so the quality of the four plus two was probably a bit variable. So what they've done is they've cut that. Anyone who is currently on the four plus two pathway can, they call it like teach it out so they can continue, but it officially closes in 2027. And anyone who wants to get into it starting now cannot get into it. So that pathway is now closed but there's four pathways still left and I'm going to talk about those four today. So first thing this is speaking about Australian pathways only. Um, second thing is you can become a general psychologist or a clinical psychologist in Australia. A general psychologist and clinical psychologist theoretically are doing mostly the same stuff. They get to see the same clients. They both get to work in a practice. They both get to work in hospitals, seeing people with mental health disorders. A clinical psychologist is just someone who is a little bit more specialized. They've done a little bit more training and theoretically in say hospitals or big organizations, a clinical psychologist is preferred when it comes to becoming like a manager or a team leader or a supervisor. But I've worked alongside so many general psychologists and the clients that we see are actually identical. So the general psychology pathway is kind of just as good if you want to become a psychologist. There's nothing really that different about them. So once you graduate from high school, you can apply for a psychology degree or an undergraduate degree. That's what they call a university degree when you first get into university or your first degree is called an undergraduate degree. And the types of psychology degrees that will count or um, you can use those credits to become a psychologist are ones that are detailed on this website, which I also have linked down below, which I also encourage you to pull up right now, pause the video. It's called APAC or the Australian Psychological Accreditation Council or something like that. Yeah, so, so APAC is an independent organization that figures out whether each university pathway is similar and they have the core units and core competencies to say that you have actually done a psychology degree. So that four years is usually split up into three years of a Bachelor of Psychology, for instance, and you learn research skills and you do different areas of study from like clinical psychology to neuropsychology. You learn a little bit about neurotransmitters. You learn a little bit about health psychology. You learn a little bit about how the brain works. But all of that is in a research field. So you don't learn any clinical skills. Clinical skills are things like therapy skills. It's like how to talk to someone, how to listen to someone, how to ask questions, how to actually understand all of the different mental health disorders, how to actually treat them. None of that is taught in your undergraduate psychology degree. It is a research psychology degree and you cannot skip it. It is part of the requirements to become a clinical psychologist later. Once you've done those three years, depending on your marks, you can apply for entry into the fourth year of psychology called an honors degree. During that honors year, you just focus on one area of interest or topic. You choose a supervisor and you write a thesis. And in my honors year, I did it in cognitive science and I did it on something called the repetition bias. It's a way of us processing information and like how we understand how reliable the information is. I spent an entire year on that. And at the end of it, you come up with a research thesis, which is like a really, really long document. It's like 80 pages or something with statistical analysis, a discussion of how you did, you know, what you did, the findings, all that jazz. And you submit that thesis as your like major work. There is a little bit of like, there are some classes and stuff, but they don't really make up that much of your honors mark. So your three years of psychology plus your fourth year of honors go together and they make up that first block, the undergraduate psychology degree. 
if you don't want to become a psychologist, you can phase out there. You can say that I've done a psychology degree and you can go in and work in like mental health organizations, in marketing. People go and divert and they work in all sorts of stuff, but you cannot become a psychologist yet with that four year degree. You can just say that you are a specialist in psychological research and a lot of organizations really prize the fact that you are an expert in statistics and you've got a lot of experience in psychology or psychology research. However, if you want to actually become a psychologist, the first stage, which is called a general psychologist, there are four different pathways. I'm going to talk you through the four different pathways. And so you'll see timestamps for the next four sessions. The four pathways are the five plus one, the master's degree, the combined master's PhD degree, or the professional doctorate pathway. So the five plus one. Five plus one means that you have done your four years of university undergraduate psychology, and then you do an extra year at another university in a postgraduate sense. So it's like you've done your first degree and then you do a postgraduate one year degree in psychology. That makes up your five years. And then it's plus one year of experience. And that's the bit where you go off and you actually have to arrange your own supervisor, a clinic to work at. They are heavily supervising your work. And this is where you're doing a lot of your like placement hours. So the five plus one, because that second part, that experience part can be so varied between what clinic you go to and who your supervisor is, at the end of it, you have to go through something called the National Psychology Exam. Once you've done that and you've passed it, then you can call yourself a general psychologist. And five plus one, you can stop there. You can become a general psychologist. However, if you wanna go further, um, you can in the following year, or you could like practice for 10 years and then come back to it. If you want to go further and get an endorsement, which basically means that you become a specialist, such as a clinical psychologist or a clinical neuropsychologist or a exercise and sports psychologist, then you can apply for an area of practice endorsement. If you've done a five plus one, like you can see underneath, you then need to do one more year of accredited study. Um, and in APAC, you need to select APAC accredited level four course and it'll detail every single course that can apply to this. And then after you've done that one year kind of bridging course, you need to do 3000 hours as a clinical registrar. And that basically means that you get paid, you get a proper job, you get to work full time. Basically by that point, you're actually working and practicing as a, as a psychologist, as a general psychologist. But uh, during that time, there's a bit more supervision and you put in a few more hours in terms of um, training videos. We call it continuing professional development. And it's just a little bit more rigorous than normal work. Once you've done your standalone area of practice program, plus you've done those 3000 hours, then you can submit a form to APRA, which is like the health practitioners regula reg regulation agency, and you can apply to become a clinical psychologist. That form usually gets processed in like two months or so. <laughs> um, and then you can call yourself a clinical psychologist. So that's the five plus one. Second pathway after you finish your four year undergraduate psychology degree is you do a master's degree. And this is the pathway that I took. I did a master's of clinical psychology at the University of Sydney. And this two year degree is very competitive because you're only getting around 20 to like 40 spots. At UCID we had 20, at UNSW there was 12, at UTS I think it's 40. But like you can see in honours there's probably like hundreds of students from unis all around Australia and they're all kind of fighting for these like 20, 12, 40 spots. And the reason for that is because the masters has a lot of supervision. Each lecturer gets paired up with like four students and they really have to like watch a lot of your practice. And so there's just not enough people to go around to supervise people. The master's of psychology degree is the kind of most straightforward in that you don't need to go and do the national psych exam, like the five plus one degree in it, you get classes, you get placements, you get supervision. All of those are pre-organized by the uni. So you don't have to go and find those yourself. Once you have done that master's of clinical psychology degree, then you can go on to your area of practice endorsement. Um, all you do is you do another 3000 hours. Um, some people can't be bothered with the registrar hours, for instance, or maybe they need to take a break or whatever it is. 
as soon as you've done your master's degree, you can call yourself a general psychologist. So you can stop there and do your registrar program later. But if you want to do it straight like I did, the registrar program, you're working, you're making money, it's a proper job. So I would probably just go straight into the registrar. But you call yourself a clinical psychology registrar during that time and you get 3,000 hours of practice, just like in the five plus one. It's just a little bit more heavily supervised. You just have to submit some logs about what you've done and your training and all of that jazz. But once you've done your 3,000 hours of practice and it has to be over two years, so you can't do 3,000 hours within six months or something, um, over two years, then you can apply for your area of practice endorsement. It's a form. Um, and then you can call yourself a clinical psychologist. So the third pathway is a master's PhD combined degree. The five plus one and the masters are two years extra. This one is a four year extra because you are combining a the master's degree with a whole PhD. And I think a PhD is usually three years. And so because you get to squish it, they somehow made it four years. But this is a really, really intense program because you've just opened yourself up to two separate postgraduate degrees. A master's degree means that you are a specialist in becoming a clinical psychologist, a practicing psychologist. A PhD means that you are a specialist in becoming a researcher. So a PhD is like three years of basically one area. You conduct like four huge experiments. You actually publish papers after each of those experiments. Those papers can go into scientific journals for like the psychological community around the world to read. And so after people have done a PhD in an area, they are seriously like an expert in that area as a researcher. If you do a PhD alone in Australia, you cannot practice as a clinical psychologist because you don't learn any clinical skills in a PhD. It's purely research. But the PhD allows you to become a lecturer, a professor, a tutor. You can run classes at universities and you can become like a psychological researcher. One of my friends took the combined program because she really likes research and she wants to practice. And when she graduated from that, she now works part time as a researcher and as a psychologist. And some people really love that, that they can do both. I really didn't want to become a researcher. I only wanted to practice. And so I would recommend one of the first two pathways if you really don't want to become a researcher. Once you have done that, then you can again apply for general registration and become a general psychologist. If you want to go further and become a clinical psychologist, if you want to go further and become a clinical psychologist, then you also do the registrar program. But unlike the first two pathways, you don't have to do as many practice hours. You only need to do 2,250 hours and then you can apply for your clinical endorsement and be called a clinical psychologist. On top of that, because you've done a PhD as well, then your title actually comes out as Dr. Something Something clinical psychologist, if that's important to you. <laughs> Alrighty, and the last pathway is the professional doctorate pathway. Again, once you've done your four year undergraduate psychology degree, you can apply for an APAC accredited doctor of philosophy, oh no, sorry, doctor of psychology, doctor of psychology course. So I've never actually met anyone who's done one of these. I, to be honest, don't have a lot to say about it. I was trying to search for it on the APAC website. And I can really only see two courses in Australia that offer a doctor of psychology. And even at the end of it, there's a little mark that says accredited, but with some conditions, but they don't tell you the conditions. So to be honest, I think this is maybe something they're trying to build up, but it's not really a popular title. I've actually never met anyone in all of my practicing that has done a doctor of psychology degree. But theoretically, this is a four year pathway and once you've done that, you can apply for a general registration. And like your other three pathways, you can stay as a general psychologist and you can come into an endorsement le uh, later. Or if you want to go straight in, then for people who have done this doctorate, you only need to do 1,500 registrar hours, and then you can apply for an area of practice endorsement. So I've talked mostly about the endorsement about clinical psychology, because that's the one that most people want to do. That's the one where you work with mental health disorders and you diagnose, you assess, you treat them with psychological therapy. However, there are other areas of practice endorsement and there are nine areas and they are clinical neuropsychology, clinical psychology, community psychology, counseling psychology, Educational and Developmental Psychology, that's one long one. 
forensic psychology, health psychology, organizational psychology, and sports and exercise psychology. So those are your other areas of specialization. Clinical is probably by far the most popular, but for instance, if you only want to work with forensic populations then, and forensic, I mean people who are in maybe jail or have committed crimes, that would be a forensic. Or educational and developmental psychologists, you do a lot of neuropsych, ADHD, autism, intelligence testing, and your focus would probably be only with young people and families, and you might be working more in schools. So check out the other areas of endorsement if you want to do psychology, but maybe the idea of therapy isn't actually that appealing to you. But yeah, I hope that was helpful. And I hope the way I just did it makes it a little bit more clearly. Like I said, really go on the website and also open up the APAC website. Please comment down below if you have questions, bearing in mind that I am a practicing psychologist. I don't work as a careers counselor. So I apologize for those really specific, like, can this unit transfer? I don't know. A really good path is actually to email the university that you're interested in entering. And there are kind of like specialists whose job it is to determine whether different unis match and you can transfer units and all that jazz. But yeah, I hope that was helpful. I think becoming a psychologist is an amazing career. However, it is long. It is obviously very competitive and even more so now that they've dropped the four plus two pathway. There are lots of other pathways that you can take if your goal is to help people, work in mental health, have a fulfilling career. And I think I'm going to make a video soon about the different types of career pathways that you can take that aren't psychology. Yeah, if you do really, really want to do therapy, you want to become a clinical psychologist or a general psychologist, then in Australia, those are the pathways. I hope that was helpful. And I upload weekly videos, so I will see you next Thursday. Bye.